Hello lovely people, how are you all uh, during this lockdown period? <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a brew day today, so it's about time um, that I did one. So I kind of mentioned, I think, maybe the last video, uh, that I'm doing the traditional bock from the Bible. Um, double batch, so 2 times 23 litres. Um, and again, I think I mentioned, I'm going to try that out. So I'm going to do a split batch, so half of it is going to be standard kind of uh, safe lager uh, W3470 which is going to be fermented at around 12 degrees in the fermentation fridge. And because I've only got room for one bucket in the fermentation fridge I'm going to do the other half with this uh, Mangrove Jacks M54 uh, ambient temperature lager yeast. So apparently none of the kind of um, you know adverse effects from fermenting lager at room temperature so we'll <laughs> we'll see uh, and I will when it comes to it and it's all kind of fermented and conditioned and carbonated I'll do a side by side and I'll let you know what it's like so um, without further ado let's get on to brew day uh, let's get some footage shown and uh, hopefully it'll be a good one Right, it is time to mash in. So we're using a combination of pale malt, Munich malt, uh, special B and carapils. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get all this in, get it mashed in. I'll put the, um, the recipe in the description. So feel free to use it. Go for the Munich malt first. Now in with the pale. Get the caracoles in. That's a one kilogram bag. Get the rest of the caracoles, some rice holes, and uh, the special bee. So that is the last of the grains. This special bee smells amazing. Mmm. Kind of caramel treacle smells. Alright. Let's give that one final stir. Let it rest for a few moments. Whilst I get the uh, all the pipe work connected. And then we'll get recirculating around the grain bed. Alright, all mashed in. Um, nice consistency, maybe a little on the thick side, but nothing, nothing major. Um, no dough balls that I could see, so uh, jobs are good. Then. Right, I'm going to switch to mash mode. Um, then we'll crack on. So the valves are open. You can see it going around the corner there. I'm going to recirculate through. Kind of full chiller back into the tank. So let's get the pump on. been a while since I brewed on this and I'm a bit rusty. Um, forgot to put that in the down position so that it recirculates outside the vessel. So that's done now. Happy days. Time to mash out. Look at that, lovely and clear. A bit of water down there but not too bad. We're covering the elements at least. No drips. Happy days. So we're in the sludge phase. The that one up to about 55 litres. We are at hot break. So we've got 56 grams of Northern Brewer going in. So let's get that in. Make sure we don't have a boil over or anything sinister like that. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to get the steam hat and condenser on. Oh, we're down to 35% power. 
which should be more than enough to, yeah, I mean it basically sustains the hundred all the way through, no problem whatsoever with the steam hat on and the condenser, so we're in great guns already. I am going to try and uh, save some water this time. Uh, the only vessel I've got though is the sparging tank that I've just emptied, so yeah, I'm going to try and bring something up and open it so that I at least save kind of about a third of what I'm going to otherwise waste. Um, so I've got a little bit of a leak uh, kind of through the top connector here, but yeah, so be it. It's not the end of the world. Alright. So there's two hop additions, the one at the start of the boil and then one 30 minutes from the end, which is going to be Tetnang. So I'll see you then. Right, 30 minutes of the boil left. In's going 26 grams of Tetnang. It's 15 minutes of the boil. Too pro to flop. We're going in. So we'll get circulating around the counterfoil chiller to sterilise it. And uh, we're nearly done. Thank you. Yeah, you know, Brewers, brew day is over. Um, could have gone a bit smoother. I would have liked it to have gone a bit smoother, but um, nothing major. Um, I think I'm just a bit rusty, so I've not brewed for about two months. So a couple of little niggles were, I'd, you know, turned the pump on, but, you know, I didn't have the bottom valve in the right position. So, you know, no big deal, no harm, no foul, nothing came of it. So no issues there. Uh, just managed to catch the um yeah the, the the kind of levels dropping uh below the element so i just caught it just in time so i wasn't really paying attention which is i i, I kind of was but not on that <laughs> particular piece of of, of the of the kind of brew uh cycle so yeah I, I just about caught it just as it was kind of you know you could see the elements uh you know around the side so quickly you know quickly throttle the pump uh, let the balance, uh, let the the you know the levels kind of balance out a little bit, um, so that that could have been disastrous. And what I did realise, and I only kind of realised this at the end of the brew day, when I was kind of cleaning up actually, was that the pump inlet dip tube was pointing in the down position. So obviously from when I was cleaning up on the last brew, I've kind of put it down to, you know, to, to kind of, you know, drain and pump around the, the kind of cleaning solution and whatnot. Obviously forgot to put it back. And so it's a good job I caught, you know, it's a good job I managed to kind of catch the, uh, yeah, the levels kind of dropping and, and, and remedy that in time. Because if I didn't, um, then it would have been a disaster and I would have scorched the elements to pieces. Because obviously for those who aren't familiar uh, with the system, the, 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 the kind of dip tube, is slightly above the elements so when you're kind of drawing the water out and recirculating it through the pump that's your fail safe basically so that the uh, yeah so when the dip tube's in the upright position when it's sucking the water in it doesn't drop it, or it can't drop any further um, you know below the elements that's a, a terrible explanation but uh, <laughs> yeah basically the, the inlet for the for the um, for the pump is higher than the elements so there you go. Um, I also noticed that the whirlpool and dip tube was in a pretty poor place um, as well. So I didn't get a very good whirlpool either. So again, nothing major, just a couple of really poor, um, you know, kind of things on my part. So um, I got, I was a bit low on my gravity too. So I should have got 106.4, got 105.2. So I'm not sure if my um, I'm not sure if my hydrometer is <laughs> knackered, to be honest. So it, it, I, don't, I can't see any cracks in it or anything. But um, I always seem to be down on my gravity, uh, for the most part. Anyway, uh, I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, so I, I need to get um, maybe not an, an optical refractometer or something like that. So you know I can get a second opinion um, on it. So I always seem to be quite low down, which I mean historically I never used to be. So maybe maybe it's just me, 
maybe it's just me I'm not doing things uh, maybe as well as I should be doing uh, and I've still kind of got I'm still in between grain crushes so supplies and stuff so I'm never quite sure from one brew day to the next what kind of grain crush I'm going to be using and sometimes it's a mixture of both so obviously those, ver those variables aren't going to help me um, but I'm not too worried so it's going to be a fairly strong beer anyway so it should be six and a half it's just going to come out to uh, we don't know what it's going to finish at yeah I guess um, but yeah if it comes out to around kind of five and a half and as long as it's balanced malt to hops then, then I'm okay with that then you know it's fine so anyway enough waffle uh, hoping to get another brew day done uh, this week um, so yeah we'll see I've not decided what I'm making so I guess what I've got left in terms of grains will dictate that if I can make anything I'm sure I've got enough to make something uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that footage. Uh, when all this is fermented, I'll do a side by side comparison uh, to to yeah, compare the yeast that I used, and um, yeah, that'll do for today, right? Okay, so keep yourself well. Don't get coronavirus. Um, yeah, give me a like, share, subscribe, uh, and hope to see you guys soon. Take care now. Bye bye.